title of today's conference is At the Sunset of Empire, the Formation of the Final Byzantine Liturgical Synthesis in the Patriarchate of Constantinople. The Byzantine Liturgical Synthesis, as Alexander Schmemann called it, reached its final formation in Paleologan Byzantium, that is to say the period of Byzantium under the Paleologan emperors from 1261 until 1453, the last years of the empire before the fall of Constantinople, thereby laying the foundations for the survival of Orthodox culture that Romanian Byzantinist Nicholas Yorga famously christened Byzans après Byzans, Byzantium after Byzantium, that is to say the preservation of Byzantine culture in the Orthodox churches after the fall of Byzantium. Described as founded on a crime and a wash in the blood and cruelty of Byzantine dynastic intrigue, Paleologan Byzantium was a beleaguered civilization squeezed between enemies east and west, Turkish emirates across the Straits in Asia Minor, Serbs and Latins in Greece and the Balkans, squeezed, as I said, into a rump empire scarcely large enough to justify the name empire. Yet paradoxically, in this period of ruin, Byzantium experienced a remarkable cultural revival, not only humanistic but also spiritual, reflected in the monastic renewal, church iconography, and theology of the Hesychus descendancy. As Stephen Runciman wrote, if there is any meaning in the concept of decadence, there are few polities in history that better deserve to be called decadent than the East Christian Empire during the last two centuries of its existence. In strange contest with the polit political decline, the intellectual life of Byzantium never shone so brilliantly as in these two centuries. I shall focus on how this renaissance was reflected in liturgy and iconography and in a theology that explains them both. The topic is a vast one, so I can only present some suggestive vignettes. In so doing, my purpose will be to clear away some of the popular clichés concerning Byzantine culture and art that I consider exaggerated, if not erroneous. The first such cliché is the notion that Byzantine liturgy was more spontaneous and freewheeling over against the rubricistic legalism of the canonically oriented Latins. This is simply romantic rubbish. The observance of an established taxis or order was fundamental to the Byzantine worldview in both church and state. Secondly, the notion that Byzantine liturgy, the symbolic liturgy par excellence, is an ethereal transcendent symbolic mix impenetrable to the non-initiate. In the late and middle Byzantine periods, when what Hans Joachim Schultz called the evolution of its symbolic form takes place, the Byzantine liturgy actually moved from the symbolic to the more narrative and concrete. 